Hey there, everybody. Hope you're doing well. It's been a while. So in this video, I'm going to break down this image of mine called Ruin One. I released this image and a few others as NFTs over on Bitsky, which is a platform for NFTs. And I basically put out a little poll on it on Twitter asking people which image they'd like to see broken down uh, in Photoshop layer by layer. And it seemed like this image was the most popular, so I wanted to give the people what they asked for. I haven't been posting much lately, but I really want to get back into it. So if you want to see more videos like this or just see more behind the scenes stuff and how I make my images, feel free to subscribe, like the video, all that jazz. So now let's go into Photoshop and I'll show you how I made this image. So here we are in Photoshop now and uh, let's just get right into this. I'm going to turn everything off, start from the beginning. We have a sky. Now. I actually combined two images of skies in there and uh, it'll be more apparent later why I did that. And this layer is just cleaning up a bit of random stuff in the corner, kind of distracting once all the figures are there. And the next group of adjustments is brightening the sky. Just a bunch of adjustment layers. So curves, color balance, gradient map, hue desaturation, or hue saturation, excuse me. Uh, I basically just wanted this guy to pop a bit more. I could have done this in, in camera raw. I guess I just opted to use adjustment layers for some reason for this. The bulk of this edit though, as simple as the image is, was just cutting out all of the figures of myself. Uh, these are all self portraits shot in my living room and then uh, masking out this building, uh, this, um, this structure rather. So to start with, I'll just show you what it actually looked like, uh, what the raw images looked like. So these are all me you know, standing in my living room, standing on a chair, I believe. I'm just gonna select one of these to start with. I'll just close them all. Um, I think this one's actually larger. Yes, cool. So let's do that one so you can see it a bit better. So I'm just gonna turn the layer masks off so you can see better and turn this off because it's darkening. So as you can see, it's just me standing in my living room on a chair. Very un, not, not the coolest looking thing, but just to match the perspective and to kind of get similar light, I have a, an alien bees off camera right over here pointing up at my ceiling that way. Um, it's mimicking this kind of overcast light as much as possible. It is kind of impossible to perfectly match outside light in a small room, unless if you have like eight lights and you have them all in every side of the room and it's the most diffused light ever. But considering I was going to be uh, darkening the pants and darkening everything on these figures to make them look like they're just silhouettes, I didn't need shadow detail in the pants or anywhere really. So it wasn't a big deal for me. So I'm going to turn this off and turn the rest of them back on. Cool. There we go. And this highway, freeway, intersection type thing was actually just uh, from a construction site in Montreal. We, if you know anything about Montreal and if you live here especially, you'll know that we are constantly taking stuff down, putting stuff up, it's nonstop. The orange cones are the only consistent thing in the city. Um, but yeah, so this was just there. I took a walk. I knew this was going on, so I took a walk around this site and it was kind of just chilling there waiting for me to take its photo and if you know anything about my work you know that I love post-apocalyptic stuff like this so or anything that could be kind of turned into a post-apocalyptic scene and so for me this was kind of just the perfect base image to use uh, for something that's somewhat narrative based like you could at least piece together a story from this image it's not necessarily that I'm trying to tell a story but you can look at this and see that some kind of confrontation is going down. You know, these people are all gathered here. This person, this person is just on the edge of the, the structure. Something's going down. And uh, so the last person, again, same thing. But uh, this time, instead of facing that way, I had myself facing the figures. And again, these are all just darkening. And here's the original again, just chilling in my living room. So. If you can match your perspective in your images like this, you can make your composites look a lot more realistic. I'm sure most people looking at this would probably, their first instinct would be that I wasn't actually up there, but you never know. People do some crazy things for photographs. The actual selection process, or not selecting, but the masking process for the uh, freeway thing here was another pretty time consuming part of this project just because of all the little details, all these wires and things like this that I really wanted to keep. I didn't want to just make some really uh, crappy selections. I wanted to keep as much as I could. So that's why it took so long. And when I'm doing this, I'm just painting either with an actual paintbrush on the mask, or if you have these more uh, straight line areas like this, for example, using the pen tool is probably your best bet. So that way you can just kind of do this and perfectly align it up. Obviously I would zoom in more if I was actually doing it, but just for context, that's what you would do. 
And uh, sometimes I think I did it with the final version of this, but often when I'm done an image, I'll just slap like a very, very small amount of noise onto the uh, image just to potentially deal with any banding. With this guy especially, I remember noticing that there was some weird stuff going on in the corners. So this is just a 100% gray layer, which you can just do like this, 150% gray, excuse me, not 100% gray. And then uh, you just literally just go to the noise filter, add noise, add as much as you want, and then adjust the opacity. If you want a lot of noise, crank it up all the way. If you set it to soft light or overlay, then you're good to go. So it just adds a bit of detail. And obviously 100% I think is uh, it's a bit too much, but maybe like 20 or 30% noise, just a good way to deal with any potential banding issues that might arise. It's kind of impossible to know until you get it printed. I mean, there, there are some telltale signs that banding will occur. Like if you have like a huge uh, shift of colors, so if you have like red slowly turning to blue, you're gonna get some banding there. But even just these gray to dark gray areas are they're probably prone to banding. So I just wanted to add some there. So that's how I made this image. I hope you enjoyed seeing the process and enjoyed seeing how I made it. A lot of my edits are like this. They're very simple uh, techniques, just kind of pulled to their limit. It's a lot of masking, a lot of compositing, matching lighting, matching perspective, things like that. And they're really just a backbone of any composite work in general. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you leave a like, leave a comment, all that good stuff that helps the channel grow. Subscribe, of course. There will be more videos coming. I have to get back into my rhythm, I will. I like doing videos like this. I'm a bit rusty as you can probably tell from this video, but I hope you enjoyed seeing the video all the same. So take care and uh... <laughs>